See, when, when, when we talk about the purpose for passion, the purpose for passion is what creates productivity. But it does more than that. Passion is crucial for persuasion. Passion is crucial for persuasion. I've often said that I could never sell a product that I wasn't sold on. I can't get excited about something I'm not sold on. How, how, do, how, do, you, how do you do that? How, 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 do you, how does a person live in the realm of this kind of a fallacious type? I can't get excited about something I can't, I, that doesn't excite me. You know? I mean, word of God, it's, it's just, it, it excites me. The Bible, the scripture, the, to know that God is speaking to me, that excites me. I absolutely love that. The reason why I'm so passionate about what I'm passionate about is because I believe so much in it. I believe so much in it. And that doesn't even, doesn't even touch some of, the, some of the reformers, some of the ones who were burned at the stake for what they believed. I mean, those guys had a passion that we can't even touch. I mean, those guys were crazy. I mean, burning at the stake, singing songs and and uh, reciting scripture. I mean, that's passion. I wish we could all, well, not burn at the stake, but I wish we could all have that same passion. I wish we could all be driven by that same excitement that this is so real. These guys knew it was real. They knew it was real. And they had conviction. One person says, if you don't love what you do, you won't do it with much conviction or passion. You don't love what you do. And I just, I just love what I do. And that's why I can teach with conviction and passion. Because I believe it wholeheartedly. I love it. I couldn't persuade someone if I was not persuaded myself. You know, Paul was persuaded because he was passionate. It's why. He was persuasive, rather, because he was passionate. Paul knew that what he believed was true. He didn't have to second guess it. He didn't have to, he didn't have to make a game out of it. He didn't have to, he didn't have to uh, you know, ask too many questions. He knew it because he, he, was, he had revelation by God. He knew it. He was excited. He could go out there and he could be beaten and he could be imprisoned and he could be excited because what he knew was true. And that came across in his persuasive ability. And he knew that, as a matter of fact, uh, he knew that we were all going to be judged for our deeds. So he, uh, and this was sobering to him, 2 Corinthians, he said this, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to as he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Listen to this. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in our consciousness. Now listen, this is this when I think of when I think of his ability to persuade. He persuaded because he knew the terror. That word terror is the word where we get our word phobia from, the fear. He knew the fear of the Lord. He knew that one day we were all going to stand before God. And because he knew that one day we were all going to stand before God, he was able to persuade people. He had passion. He was convincing you know, Paul was convincing because he was convinced. He was convincing because he was convinced. I think that's why God used him so mightily. He was able to go out and to preach the gospel and to teach and to reason and to be beat down and all of these things because he was so convinced it was true. And we think about our purpose. And we think about what drives our purpose and here's what happens. Because we don't have a purpose in life, we have no passion behind it. You see what I'm saying? We have nothing that really excites us because we don't know where we're going. And so when I think about finding purpose in life, we have to know the destination so that we can have the excitement to get us there. 
And as, and as we have that excitement, we are going to persuade people along the way that what we're saying is real, that God is real, that what we're saying is true, that the Bible is real, it's alive. We can be excited about it. I, I, I've heard people speak on biblical things where I have to ask the question, I'm like, this, this guy doesn't even believe it. It's not coming across like he even believes it. It's like he just doesn't have it in the gut. And, and in the following weeks, as we begin to talk about our family, the purpose for our family, whether it be our, 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 our children or our, our, our wives, our husbands, our work, our church, our faith, all of these things, as we begin to, to, to dissect all these, as we begin to look through all of these things, you'll find real quickly that it's hard to raise a family with passion if you don't understand the purpose of the family. How do you go to work if you're just going to work just to, if, 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 if the whole goal of work is just to put food on the table, it's hard to, hard to be excited about going to work. You know, you're in that little, rat, you know, that little hamster wheel. You have no passion because of it. Now, Paul gives uh, some instructions to Titus as to the qualifications of ministers in Titus chapter 1. And one of the qualifications is to hold fast the faithful word as he had been taught in order that he may be able to convince the gainsayer. Here's what he says. Titus 1.9, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may, listen to this, be able... By sound doctrine, sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayer. You see, friends, you won't convince or persuade someone of the truth if you're not adhering to the truth yourself. How, how can I convince you of something that I'm not participating in? It's, it's almost impossible. And, that's was, and that was Paul's letter to Timoth or Titus saying, Listen, you by sound doctrine may be able to exhort and to convince the gainsayer that you can persuade them. And quite frankly, you won't adhere to what you're not passionate about. You're not going to be doing it very long. You'll have a glimpse of, of success at times. At times a person will have a glimpse of success. But the ones who are getting it done who have found purpose in their life and are successful in arriving at the destination are the people who have passion behind their purpose. The purpose for passion motivates. It gets us going. Boy, if I, if I just had to wake up in the morning and go to work, and I mean, I would, I, would, I would get here right on time and I would leave right on time. I wouldn't be excited about it. I wouldn't put in any extra time. I would just be kind of placid, you know? Okay, I'm just normal. And nobody wants to live like that. Nobody wants to live with just a status quo, lukewarm, meager, just, you know, a, 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 a base, just nothing. That's why it's so cool to see people get excited, isn't it? It's so cool when you see people get really excited about something and they just get on fire. Listen, I think they're crazy, the, the guys that wear the big cheese things on their head during the Green Bay Packer thing, and they got the big piece of cheese. I think it's crazy. Where I'm from back in Minnesota, these guys, the Vikings, these guys would have their shirts off and they'd paint their bodies purple, and they'd wear, you'd wear these helmets and paint half their faces, and I'm just like, these guys are crazy. But that is so cool. You can be so excited about something that doesn't mean one thing, you know? And I just get excited because it's like, I wish, I wish the church could be infected with that same sort of passion. Unfortunately, so oftentimes we're not. It's true. It's true. Those guys are crazy. Crazy. Wearing cheese on your head. You ever see a guy with a cheese fight a guy with look like a Viking? I mean, these guys are crazy. How about those, uh, what do you call them? The mascots? Crazy people. 
they just love doing the mascot thing. You ever see somebody who's a, who is like the big bear and then you see them when they're out of, out of character? I never have. I'm just curious if you have. I just wonder if they're just excited about life all the time, you know? Or if they just run around, you know, like a big clown. You know, clowns are kind of creepy nowadays, but I won't go into that. Passion is, cru- is crucial for persuasion. If you want to persuade people, you've got to have passion. You've got to be excited about what it is you believe. Find your, finding your purpose is great. Then we need to embrace it. Mm-hmm.